So it's six and eight. Six and eight, okay. Okay. So, so we're on Daf 100, Kuf, the Sech the Shabbos. We'll start on Sadiq Tesom and Beis on the bottom. Honorable, Pshita Li, Maya Magabi Mayim, Hainu Hanachasim. So let's say you, you know, for every act of caring, you need an Akira, which you got to pick something up from a stationary spot and place it down on a stationary spot. So if you pick up water... Excuse me, one second, let me interrupt you. Tomorrow, Young is six and eight. Okay. okay. Six and eight. So, Pshitali, Maim Gabi Mayim, Hainu Anachasim. So you might think that water is constantly in flux, is constantly moving. No, but if I pick up water from the top of a pool, from the top of a body of water, it's, it's viewed as that's its resting place. And therefore, if I pick it up in a pail and I place it, let's say, and the water happens to be in Rosh Hashanah and I place it down in Rosh Hashanah I'm going to be hired for Hotsa. It, it isn't, it's a good Akira. However, egos al gabi mayim, if you have a walnut that's floating in the water, lavain achasim. So that is not going to be considered an akira because the, the walnut is viewed as if it's not, it's, it's a different item than water. Water is water is water. So water that's on top versus water on the bottom, it's all considered one thing. But, but a walnut or any item that's bobbing in the water if you pick it up and then place it, and it's in the Rishusa Yachi, then you place the Rishusa Rabbi, you are not high for Hotsa. Because it's not considered that the moving item in the water is, is at rest. But water is at rest. So, boy, Rav. So, let's extend this question further. And we get into a little bit of Einsteinian relativity. Egos Bekli. This time you have the walnut in a in a cup, ukli tzapa gabi mayim, like in a on a in a saucer, and the saucer is floating on the water. Ma, what's the frame of reference? Do we look at the walnut? Well, the walnut is at rest, sitting on top of a of a of a dish, and therefore maybe if I pick up the walnut from the dish, I have done an akira. O Dilma Basar Kli Azlina. Or is my frame of reference the Kli? Well, the Kli is like a walnut that's bobbing in the water. It's not at rest. Mahalo night. Teku. So the Gemara doesn't give us an answer. I guess because, as we know from Einstein's discussions, it's also the frame of reference. You know, when you, if, if frame of reference is key when, when measuring the speed of light or velocities, it, it, you know, all of his thought experiments with trains going at 60 miles an hour when there's an observer on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a train station and, you know, there's movement going on in the train car. So he, he asked all the same questions. And what's interesting is that the speed remains the same no matter what the frame of reference is. This was all Einstein's revolution of Newtonian, I mean, Newtonian physics, everyone thought was uh, resolved everything, but it really didn't. And to me, it seems like the Gemara is dealing with some of the same issues here in this particular question, that it, that it leaves as a teku, meaning frame of reference. Okay, what about Shem Al-Gabiyayin? You have oil, Oil and, and wine don't mix. Oil will float on top of wine. So, Machlokas Rabbi Yechem Rabban. Like, again, is the Shemin, even though it's a, since it's a liquid, do we view it as all one thing? It's not considered a separate item. S similar to when we talked about lifting water from on top of water. Or is Shemin going to be like the egos, like the walnut that's bobbing in the water? And, and the, this comes up by Tumah Vatahara, this not. Shemin Shetzafel Gabi Ayin, 
Benoga Tvul Yom Bashem. And so a Tvul Yom is a person who, let's say, touched a Nevela, touched, touched a Sheretz, a Tomei. Now, if he goes to the mikvah during the morning, so the remaining of the day, he's called a Tvul Yom. He, at night, once he has Erev Shemesh, he can eat Truma and Kodshim. But during the day, he can't. He's a Tvul Yom. So a Tvul Yom, and the Shemen happened to be Truma. And the Tvul Yom touched Shemen, Lo Posel Ela Shemen. So the Chacham hold that only the Shemen becomes Tomei, not the water. Because the, the Tanakama here is viewing the Shemen like the Egos as a separate item. Rav Yoichan ben Nuri Omer, because it's, they're both liquid, Shneim Chibur Zelazeh, they're considered one unit. And therefore everything would become Tomei. And it would be the same Issue if you, for example, if someone lifted the Shemen and you want to know whether you've performed a halachically significant Akira, if you hold like the Chachamim, where it's considered a separate item and it's floating, so it's not at rest, therefore you're not Bichayim. But Rav Yachmanuri would hold like it's picking up water that's on top of water, it's all one thing and therefore would be considered an Akira. So, so that would be told in that machloik as between Rav Yechonah and the Chachamim regarding oil and wine, or oil and wine. Om Rabbi, Bor Bishasar, Rabbi Mamuk, Asar, What happens if he, if he picked it up full yom? Why does he have to be a full, why does he have to be a full yom? Whatever, if he's a full No, 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 no. The picking up, the picking up has nothing to do with the full yom. The, the case where we see this machlokas has to do with the tfu yom touching shemen and whether it, the time is only the shemen. That gives us this concept that shemen is viewed by the Tanakama as a separate item. It's not a chibur to the water. So therefore, analogizing over to the case of Shabbos, if somebody picked up the shemen, that whether you're chayv or not for a real akira, would be totally in this machlokas, whether shemen and, and water or shemen and wine is considered one unit or not one no, unit. No, but I'm, I'm asking you, why is he have to, why is he have to, what happens if he's a full tome without being a tful yom? Let's say he's tam, mamisha tome without having to be tful yom. What difference would it make if it's tful yom or if he's a full fledged? It, 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 it has to because it has, it's a technical detail regarding soul and tome. That means a, uh, whether or not if somebody was fully tome touched it. So that item would go ahead and, and be metame the water which is it's in contact with. They use the case of a tful yom because it'll only possible the shem and it won't convey, it won't give it a, you see, truma oh. doesn't go beyond the shlishi. Oh, right, and, right. Okay. and once a sheni touches truma, it possibles it. But it, oh. but it, it doesn't, can't go on and be metame further. Right, so okay. Rashi explains us that the reason why they said it's tful yom because otherwise there would be no nafkamina and din because the shemen would have a level of tumma strong enough that it would puzzle the wine anyways, just from oh, right, one right, right. that food stuff to the other food stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. That in uh, Khanami Rashi, I didn't go into that detail, but the, the Rashi explains that. Amra Bai. Borbashusarabi Mamuka Sarukhavashmona. You have a bore that's ten deep. Remember, we said if a bore is ten deep and four wide, so that's a Rushusayachid, fine. So this one is eight wide. The Zarak Lutocha but you threw into the bore a, a, uh, uh, a dividing mat, and the mat landed in the bore and divided the mat, the bore, into two areas of, uh, into two areas of Chura of four, or maybe less than four. But Abai says you're chayim. I guess that's if it landed, not where it divided them. Chilka b'vachzelas, if it so happened to land, where it divided the board directly into two things, potter. Because now it, it turned the board into a mechitz, right? It doesn't have the right dimensions for Rosh Now remember that we dealt with this Friday morning with the concept of you, if you create a, if you take a board that's 10 and you remove the dirt from it, you know, if it happens simultaneously, 
that you throw something out of the board, you make it. So we dealt with that. So Abaya seems to say, Labaya, the Peshitya, the Machitzah, the Bavat, the Machitzah. So if a, if a temporary mat will be Mavatal, the Machitzah, of a board, Kosher can choy Mavatal, the Machitzah. And certainly using dirt, which is going to be, it's, which seems to be more Kavua than a mat, will be Mavatal, the Machitzah. Now, Rabbi Yochanan, remember, Rabbi Yochanan wasn't sure if you threw dirt either into the bore, out of the bore, and you changed the stanza of Mechitzah. He left that as a, as a boy, as a, as a, as a question. A, 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 a mobile mat that can be thrown in and out is certainly less permanent than if you threw dirt into it. Rabbi Yochanan would certainly hold that a matzelis would not be mavatel a previous mechitz. V'ram rabbi, bor b'shus rabbi m'muk asur chav arba. So you have a bor that's ten deep, four wide, so it meets the criteria for b'shus ayochi. Malaya maya. Now, if you fill it up with water, does that sort of? In, we just talked about throwing a a mat which divides it, and that according to Abai would would. Say that it mavatos the mechitza. Well, if you fill a bore up with water, does that mavatos the mechitza? I mean, you can't put anything else in there. Still says the Gemara Bezorik l'Sol Chachay. Yechay, it's still considered a bore b'shus ayochi. However, Malaya Peros, if it was filled with apples, the Zorik l'Sol Chapoter. My title, Mayim Lo Mavatli Mechitza. Water does not serve to mavatos the mechitza, but Peros mavatos the mechitza. The fruit will. Because, as if, it were, for example, Rashi says, it's as if you filled up with dirt. Peros is like that, but water will not, will not do that. We don't say, with water, but Peros will do it. There's a price to support this. Azarik bin Ayamli Istratya. Istratya is a Rashun Sarabin. It's like Tiananmen Square. It's like a big square. Now, we're going to learn in detail that the status of a, a body of water is a Carmelis. Even though, even though Lachura, a lot of people could travel on, on a waterway, it has, the Chacham gave it a status of a Carmelis. So therefore, if you throw from water to uh, a Rishus Arabim, or vice versa, in Australia, I'm Potter. Because Carmelis is only a rabbinic Rishus, and therefore, th therefore, there would not be no Chiyot. He says like this, if you throw something from Rishus Arabim into the water, and in that water, it happens to be a sort of a depression in the floor of the ocean that is 10 deep and four wide. So that's considered like you threw it into Rosh Hashayach. Because that's sort of boy lake lamalo. Like Rashi says, if it happens to be in the water, a, a board at the, on the ocean floor, Rosh Hashayach, even though the water itself is deep. You see, clearly, this price is being brought that the water that's filling up this depression in the seabed is, uh, doesn't move out to the fact that it's a machitza, that it's got, a, it's got the stats which is like, that's the tiny namahachi to support the din that Abaya told us. Mishnah. Hazorik Arba Amish Pakoiso. We've already quoted this Mishnah a number of times. You throw something in Rosh Hashanah and it lands on the wall. If it lands, so it's as if now above 10 Tvachim Rosh Hashanah is a Makam Ptur. Now, if it lands on the wall, it's as if you threw it on the ground. 
Freyti Gemara, the Gemara thinks, well, if you threw, let's say, a ball at the wall, so it didn't really come to rest. It bounced off the wall or a stone. So Arav Yechem Bidvele Shemein we're talking about a sticky fig, which we mentioned yesterday as well, where it's stuck to the wall. And uh, so if it's below 10 Tfachim, uh, you were chayiv for transferring from Rishus Rabim to Rishus Yochim. As long as the wall is also 10, 10 Tfachim high, by which we said, the Malach right. So it's Rishus Yochim. Or <clears throat> you're chayyim for transferring arba amitz b'rishus arabim even even if that wall was not the, the rishus had traveled more than arba amitz as long as it's within, within ten tefachim of the ground so it remains in the airspace of rishus arabim so you're chayyim for transferring arba amitz b'rishus arabim. Amir Amir Rab Amir Rab Amir Rab Chiyav Zorak L'Malam Asara you threw it above. But it came to land in the in a hole on top of the wall. For example, let's say the hole is small, but if the if the hole is on an object that's dalid by dalid and ten fachim high. We use sort of a fictional concept of choikikin lahashlim, since it potentially could be the right size because you can enlarge the hole. They don't hold that principle of sort of imaginary widening it based on the fact that you could potentially widen it. They would hold its pot. The Rambam seems to paskin like the Chachamim. We don't say Chokikin Lahashlim. So we are lenient regarding this Machlokas from Meir and the Chachamim. Arvira Marat. Tail. Amislaket Asramit Tocharbo. Right? Up until now, we've been talking about like an, like an obelisk, like in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, right? A straight uh, construct of something that's sitting in Shusha Rabim, 10 high and 4 by 4. Here, Rav Yudam Arav is telling us that if you have a sloped, a, like a mound that goes up gradually, as long as it rises, as long as it gets to 10 Tvachim high within Arba Amais, that's enough. Zorak the Nachal Gabo that will create the same kind of now. If it's not that, if it's not that steep, meaning it rises ten tefachim over five or six or seven on this, so then it would not you would not be chayiv. We see this in relevance to another din, Mavui Shashavu Latocho, the Nasa Midrul Shusarabi. You have like an alleyway off Rosh Hashanah. And we're going to learn in the Sech Te'erevin at length that you have to put a, a lechi and a koira in order to carry into that mavoi. You have to have some kind of hecker. You need a beam either across the mavoi or on the side of it, a lechi, so that people in the mavoi will recognize that we're now leaving the mavoi and entering the Rosh Hashanah. Without that, you couldn't carry, even though the mavoi is three sides, it's it's like an an al chotzer off the Rishus Rabim and Teklin Rishus Ayachid. You still can't carry there unless you do that hekr. However, says this Baraisa, if it has its entrance to the Rishus Rabim is sloped. The depression, either entering or exit the Mavui, is enough of a hekr. And you don't need the lechi or the koir that you normally need. And that's why over there, Rabbi said that just like 
it's it's a, 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 a standard mechitza. If the thing goes up, ten tefach within arba amos. If you threw on if you threw on a mound like that, you'd be chayiv because it, it establishes a standard which is sayyachi. Mish zarak l'toch arba amos. You're sitting in the Rosh Rabbi. You throw something and your intent is you didn't want to throw it beyond four amas. You wanted it to land at three amas. But v'nizgalgel chutz arba amas. It rolled beyond where you wanted it to go. And it rolled beyond arba amas potter. Vice versa. If you threw something and it went beyond Arba Amas, but but it rolled back, you're chayit. That means once you hit the chiyuv, and Rashi says, Shalonofolo Arefs. Because that's certain, I mean, once it fell on the ground, of course, it's no chiddish, says Rashi. But even if it traveled beyond Arba Amas, but didn't somehow come to rest, Elishar Ruach got, for example, the wind pushed it back in. So it did travel and came to rest sort of in the air and then I guess pushed back. So that would already, that would create a chiyu. Why would you say it's a chiyu? It didn't come to rest. It had to come to rest on something. It came to rest even in the air. Says Rashi, even if the wind, it didn't, it didn't come to rest physically on something. It, it like, you could see the wind grab hold of it and freeze it in place and then push it back. It's got to be within three tfachim of the ground, says Rashi, because then we use lovu. If it's above three tfachim on the ground, then it wouldn't work. So you threw it. And it went more than Arba Amis, and the wind grabbed it and pushed it back in. And even though he went and did it again, Potter. I guess in that case, the Ruach didn't, didn't stop it completely. If the Ruach stopped it even for a second, then there would be a chiyot. That's the that's the brisa to support what Rabbi Yechman said. But Amar Rabbi Tov Shlosh Rabbanon. Now this concept with you within three tefachim of the ground, so not everybody holds lavu. According to the Rabbanon who don't hold of lavu, this argues with Rabbi Kiva. And the concept of kluta, right? When you throw. From one Rishus Sayyachi to another Rishus Sayyachi, Rishus Rabbi in the middle, so Rabbi Kiva held that you use this theoretical fictional concept of Kluta and you pull it down. Don't say that they agree within three Tfachim to Kluta. No. Even within three, they don't agree. If you want it, you want to be chai, it's got to come to rest for a moment on something in the Rishus Rabbi. But if it traveled throughout the Rishus Rabbi completely from one Rishus Sayyachi to another, they would hold your potter. That would be enough to mean it to our case as well, says Rashi. When he came to rest, for example, he, he, while it's traveling, he remembers that he did something wrong. And before it comes to rest, he's part to be in that case. Because he, they don't hold of Kluta, even if it's in three trachim from the ground. So Ramah, they were learning this sugya. Amr le Ravina le Ramaymas. Lavai no masnisin. It's our mission of Amr Rav Yechim. We should not gabi mashu. Same thing. Amr le no misgalgel kamer. That's different. That's not about the wind grabbing. Misgalgel aim sofla nuach. It's never going to come to rest. Abal even the sofla nuach. This thing is traveling. Grab. He's going to pull it down. Alpha gab the 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 loy nuach command the nuach dami. So you might even according to Chachamim. Even though it didn't come to rest, it's going to come to rest. That they still hold that it's not considered as if it comes to rest because they argue with Rabbi Kiva regarding this issue of klut. Okay. 
Mishnah. Hazarik by Yam are Ba'omai's Potter. So we said a Yam is not a Rishis Arabian. It's a Carmelis. So if I'm on a boat and I throw Ardal I'm not high. Im Haya Rakak Mayim. Rakak Mayim is like a little pond of water that the, that's in the Rishis Arabian. Rishis Arabian Malechus Bazarik Lutoch Arbam is high. This is talking about, we're going to see where, where it's not Ma'akev people walking just around them to walk through it. So therefore, if you throw it, it landed in this pond, you'd also be chayim. It's, it's considered part of the Rishus Arad, says the Mishnah. As long as it's not ten tfachim deep. Once it's ten tfachim deep, so then if it's dalad al dalad, it would be Rishus Ayachid. If it's less than dalad al dalad, it would be. It would not, it might not be a Rishus but it's not part of the Rishus Arabim either, because it's because it's ten tefachim deep. That Rikat by Rishus Arabim Alechas Po. Somehow the Mishnah repeats itself and says Azor Pesoch Arbam is Chayim. The Gemara will have to give us a reason why it repeated itself. Amar Leim Rabban Rabban Bishma Hiluch Hiluch Treizimni. I understand. This when you said im hayerakek mahalachas bo, that's the concept of hiluch hakamashblon hiluch hayadeat chachme hiluch. That if the people in the rishus rabbim will walk through it when they need to, that's considered like it's part of rishus rabbim. However, you want to tell me tashmish hayadeat chach, but let's say they would only use it walking and using it are two different things. Use of an item is not considered tashmish. Fine. Why did you have to give me this the end of the, the Mishnah twice? To teach me the halacha chad bimosakham and chad bimosakshan. Because the halacha will be the same whether it's winter or summer. Three. The eat on a chad, have it be a honey meal is bimosakham. If I had only been told once, I would have thought, you know, only in the summer. Davidi inish the maskila kren of shayu. It's hot. People will walk, will wade through the pond to cool themselves off. Avi masak shamim. People don't want to get dirty. Love. So I had to be told. Li yashmi avi masak shamim. And if I would have been only told once, I would. If it's winter, the kiv and the mitanti loichmos. Listen, people are dirty from the mud anyways. So people will walk in it because they're not they're not makpid on more dirt. Avi masak chamalo. So that's. One way of learning. Abaya Omar, I'll give you another one. Maybe I would have thought that it only is part of the Rishus Rabbim if it's not if it's not Dalad Amos. If it's Arba Amos, maybe in dimension, maybe it would serve as a block for people to tell me that it's not. Even with Sarba Amos, it's, it's considered part of the Shusarab. And Ravashi Amr Yitzchak, Kasak Da Amin Hanim Mili Hechid the Hava Arba. Aval Hechid the Lohav Arba, Mifsi Possible. Maybe they'll, maybe if it's not Arba, for Tvachim. But if it's, if it's less than for Tvachim, people just step over it. And maybe the pond, therefore, would not even be considered part of the Shusarabi. So I have to be told, no, it is part of the Shusarabi, even if it's less than four tefachim. Person who threw something and it landed, you have, a, let's say you have a, a bridge and you have a, a number of wooden boards that's part of the bridge. And the bridge is a Shusarabi. A lot of people travel there. But on the side, there's a piece of a wood that sticks out. And you might think that that is not, right? It's less than Arbit Fahim. It's still considered part of Shusar Rabin because the, the Rabin will be pushed onto that board, even though it's not part of the main 
sort of bad bridge, since the rod will occasionally use it. So the same thing here by a by a pond that's less than four tefachim. Since the rabbin will be boykin boy, Ravashi is consistent, it would still be part of the Mishu Sarvak. Mishnah. Hazarik bin Ayam Abosha. Person's on the water, and which is what we said is a Carmelis. You throw from a Carmelis to this, the, the, the beach, even if the beach was Rishu Sayachid or Rishu Sarabi, it made no difference. Meaning, if you throw from the from the yacht, you're in the water, you throw it to the boat. You throw from the boat into the water. You throw from one boat to another boat. Doesn't make a difference, putter. It's all concerned that it's traveling on a carmelis. Then, Sfinos, you have 10 boats. The 10 boats are all tied to each other. Metatil and Mizulazu. You may you may carry things from one boat to the other. They're all considered. Now that's we're going to learn if it's owned by one person. If it's owned by more than one person, you need an A roof, just like living in an apartment house. From going from one to the other, you need an A roof. That's a rabbinic. I mean, Torah you can do it, but the Chachamim said you need an A roof because you get confused. Since it's owned by multiple ownerships, you might carry to Rosh Hashanah. That's, that's how the Chacham came up. So the same thing, if, if all these boats are owned by one person, you can carry without anything. That's as long as they're tied. If they're not tied up, even though they're close to each other, you're not allowed. Because a Carmelist is in between them. So Rashi says, yes, if they belong to two people, you need an Eruv. So therefore, but if they're not connected, the Eruv is bottom. So you can only make an Eruv between these boats if they're connected. If they're not connected, they're going to drift away, the Eruv won't work. Okay, Itma. What about the case of a Sfina? So how do you, let's say you're in a freshwater lake. So, and you want to get some drinking water. So Ravashi says, you have to stick out a stick from one of the walls of the boat as a hecker. Once you have that hecker, you can reach down with a pail and bring water from the water into the boat. They say no. You have to make a frame of wood four by four. You don't need walls, just the frame. You, you, you suspend the frame over the water, and then within the frame, you lower a pail and lift the water up into the boat. Why, what, is all, what is this about? Ravuna Amr Moitzi Amen Aziv Malik. Savar. Carmelis me ara mashkina. This is what Ravashi learns. You have a, a body of water that's 100 feet deep. The Carmelis is the, is the sea floor. Anything above 10 tfachim from the sea floor is considered a makam p'tur. So therefore, when you pull up the pail of water from the top of the water, you're pulling up from a makam p'tur. So what's the stick that you stuck, stuck, stuck out from the boat as a simon? You don't need a ziz. We just do it as a hecker. To recognize that, you know what? Really, the yam is a carmelist. Don't, people should not forget that this is, this is a carmelist. Technically, if, the, if you were not in deep enough water, you would not be able to do it. So we're going to ask a question. Well, how do we know whether it's deep enough? So we'll get there. But the basis for the Heter, Ravashi, is because he holds that the Carmelis extends from the bottom of the ocean or water floor. And then once you're 10 Tvachim above that, 
it's everything above that is considered a Malkam Petur. Rabbi Chizda, Rabbi Hudamri, no. Also, Malkam Arba Mamale. So, the Carmelis Misfas Mayamashkin, no. The Carmelis already begins from the ocean, from the surface of the ocean. So Maya Aras Michta. So if I don't have, if I don't create sort of an artificial Shusayachid, I wouldn't be able to take the water from the surface of the water and bring it into my boat, because I'm transferring from a Carmelis into my boat. So we create this fictional four by four frame and we're only makel, this is like a suspended wall in a sense, and the Chachanim only allow this by water. They're makel by my in order to allow this issue. Special kula. According to Ravuna, who allowed you to stick out a stick as a hacker. What about Zin and Sara? Sometimes the depth of a water, bed of water will not be ten And then you'll be, you'll be pulling water up from the Karmus which is not permitted. A boat can't travel in such shallow water. It's a it's a it's a Masora. That it's got to be at least if a boat is traveling there's got to be it's got to be at least a sorrow afraid the morva morsha is slate morsha seems to be like the head of the the front of the boat where there it might be over an area you know the boat itself is traveling but then you have a, a section of the boat that extends beyond that and maybe that might be over an area that's not 10 deep and if you pull, if you drop your pails from that area, it could be a problem. I guess they had sailors who would poke the 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 ocean with a stick to make sure, because that's the front of the boat, to make sure that the boat was not going into shallow waters. And that solves the problem. Another question. This concept that they build a frame of four by four. So the question is, now they're asking, what about the waste water? You have people went to the bath, you know, you have water that you want to get rid of. How would you dump that from the boat into the water? The so maybe you'll tell me, I'll transfer from the boat into the water, I'll throw it in the same four by four frame, but that's disgusting. If you're throwing wastewater there and you're drawing up water to drink from there, nobody's gonna to wanna to do it. So the Gemara says, the shadi lehu adafna They do not throw it directly into the water. They throw it onto the floor of the boat and then it drips off the side. So it's done indirectly. You throw it on the boat, and then the boat, then it, it flows off the boat. Ask the Gemara by Ikakoko. Still, he's taking the pail and throwing it. It's his koach that's leading to the water going. Which is so, so. The Gemara answers, So this concept that normally we say, even a indirect act, we assert if, it, it's, if it's from your kocho, since this is only a karmelist, karmel would not goizer by, by they, even though it's your kocho, it's okay. They permit it. Where do we see such a concept that by a Carmelist, they would not be goyzer koich. The Tanya, we learn the Baraisa. Tatalin, 
לא מתוכו לים ולא מן הים לתוכו. A boat, we don't take things and dump it into the water. We don't take things from the water and bring it into the Svina because we, it's a, they're both Carmelists. And then we'll continue with our Behuda tomorrow and we'll, we'll, we'll go over this tomorrow.